Today we will be discussing how to construct and use bar graphs when representing data. So a bar graph is just a way that you can see at a glance approximately the relationships between different points of data. So I am going to give you this scenario. I am going to tell you how many students are in each one of my regular math classes. I have it broken down by hour, two, three, four, six, and seven. And I have listed the number of students in each class. And what I'm going to do here on this grid, uh, on these two axes, I am going to create a bar graph that represents this data. So on the bottom, on the horizontal axis, I have the hour period, two, three, four, six, seven, corresponds to this column. And then along here, I have uh, the number of students. Now, I, instead of going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, what I did is I kind of chunked it so that here's five students, 10 students, 15 students, 20 students. So I can see here at second period, I have 15 students. So I am going to create a bar at second hour that goes up to 15. Third hour, I have 17. So I'm going to just approximate that height. Fourth period, I have 15 students again. So when I'm doing this, I'm seeing that second and fourth hour have to be the same height. Okay. Um, sixth hour, I have 17 students again. That's kind of weird how that happens. And then seventh period, I have 20 students. I'm going to bring that all the way up to that line. Now, this would be sufficient if you wanted to color them in. That is absolutely fine to help it. Um, if you like to use colored pencils, that is great. Um, so you can now see at a glance, just by looking at this bar graph, which ones am I, which classes I have the most students, which ones I have the least students. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to switch marker colors for now. We can represent multiple sets of data on the same bar graph. So if I use this same table, but I am going to uh, divide it into the number of boys and girls in each class. So I have already looked this up. So these are my actual numbers. So second hour, I have three boys and 12 girls. Second hour, I have seven boys and 10 girls. In fourth period, I have seven boys and eight girls, sixth period, eight boys and nine girls, and my last period class, I have 12 boys and eight girls. So I am going to create another bar graph using that new data, and I am going to represent it in different ways. So I'm going to have at each period two bars, one representing boys, one representing girls. So if I look at second hour, I have three boys. So three is about up to here. And then I have 12 girls. 12 is about up to here. So I am going to do this. Now one of these bars represents boys, one represents girls. I have to have some sort of key that shows which one. Now you could use different colors if you have, you want to do the boys in one color, the girls in another color with that. Say you only have one color that you're working with. You can do what, I can make a key. So I'm going to say boys, and I'm going to make a key that says girls. And I'm going to use cross hatches just to show. So my boy cross hatches are going to go this way. Girl cross hatches are going to go the other way. So now whenever I draw a bar, I'm going to make sure that boys go one way, girls go the other way. Like I said, you could create your own. You could say, well, the boys are going to be all filled in. The girls are going to be empty, like have a, a plain background. Or you could use two different colors. And it's always good practice to put your sets of data in the same order. Don't go boys first, girls here, and then girls first, boys there. That doesn't make it look like you can read it easily. All right, let's continue. Third 
shower, I have seven boys, which is right here. And I'm going to cross hatch it in that way. And I have 10 girls. So I'm going to go up to here. Fourth hour, I have seven boys. I go up here, so seven boys. And I have eight girls, so just a little bit above that. Sixth hour, I have eight boys. And I have nine girls. And last period of the day, I have 12 boys. And I have eight girls. So just by looking at this graph, we can start to talk about how data is related to each other. So we have a single bar graph and we have a double bar graph. Now we're going to go practice. 